your truth with life strategist Laura T. Real advice for regular people. Now, here's Laura. Hello and welcome to Own Your Truth, where we're talking real advice for regular people. I'm Laura T. Thank you for listening. I know there's lots of places you could spend your time and I'm grateful you're going to spend the next hour with me. Before I begin, I want to mention last week's Oscars competition. If you remember, I'm giving away a copy of the Academy Award winning movie for Best Picture for this year. But before I get to that, I have to I have to share a little personal story because I want to congratulate my husband, Todd Treance, who won the Treance Family Competition again. My husband, my kids, and I fill out ballots, and the person who gets the most correct wins not only bragging rights, but the coveted Lego Oscar replica that my son built. Todd has won five out of the six years, and and I have to share, we kind of think he cheats, because what he does is he reads those Oscar prediction sites for his guesses, while the kids and I make the effort to watch the movies and the trailers, and then we guess based on our own thoughts. So, during the week, I had an idea, and no, he has no, no idea that I'm doing this right now, that I'm going to throw out to you, my WICC listeners, do you think it's fair for Todd to use Oscar prediction websites, or do you agree with me and the kids that he's cheating? So what I'm going to do is, after tonight's show, I'm going to put up a little survey. He'll have no idea who's voting what. It'll be totally anonymous, but I want to know what you think. This is going to be fun, and I will announce the results next week. So... Be sure to go to uh, Own Your Truth with Laura T, the Facebook page, uh, and cast your vote. Do you think it's cheating if Todd uses uh, prediction websites, Oscar prediction websites, or do you think, you know what, it's totally fair, the information's out there? Tell us what you think. Okay, let me get back to the Own Your Truth Oscar competition winner. The movie Green Book won for Best Picture, and although no one guessed correctly, I have the movie to give away, so I picked someone from those who entered, and the winner is Mary Beth. I'll get the movie in the mail to you this week, so congratulations to Mary Beth, and thank you for everyone who put in your guesses. Okay. <laughs> Last week, we talked hiring. If you missed it, the recording will go up this week, along with tonight's recording of the show. Continue to check back to the Own Your Truth with Laura T. Facebook page for recordings of all past shows. I also put up there notices for upcoming content. And just this week, I started a special section of kind of behind the scenes. These are like my weekly notes about what it takes to prepare for the show. Um... It, it might surprise you about what it, what it takes to put this together. So um, if you're not on the page, feel free to go and visit. There's lots of information there, and the recordings from each show can be found there as well. On to tonight's topic. We're talking about the difference between finding a job and landing your ideal career. And there's a huge difference. Often you start the search focused on your ideal, but somehow during the process you lose sight of what you really want and end up working a job that leaves you unfulfilled. I'm here to help you avoid making that mistake with tips and tools to stay in the right mindset, to focus on what you want and make sure your next job is your ideal career match. Remember to call in if you have questions about the job search. I'm here to give you real-time advice. This is like your own free coach. Call in to see how you can apply what you hear and know that questions are answered during the second half of the show. This happens around 8.30 p.m. Remember, the phone number is 203-333-WICC. Again, the number is 203-333-9400. Two, two, and questions are answered during the second half of the show. So I can't wait to hear what you have to ask. Okay, so on to good news. Like every Sunday, we will start well. And what does that mean? It means you get more of what you focus on. So today and every Sunday, we start well with good news from around the neighborhood, across the state, and beyond. In this week's Own Your Truth Good News, 
Our first piece comes from Hudson Yards in New York City. I learned tickets to climb Thomas Heatherwick's 150-foot-tall honeycomb-shaped art installation go on sale March 15th. If you haven't been there, this structure is gorgeous. It contains 14 flights of stairs, 16 stories, 80 landings, 154 interconnecting staircases, and almost 2,500 individual steps. And it holds a thousand people at a time. So the countdown has begun for the long-awaited adult jungle gym to open up, along with the restaurants and food halls, Snark Park exhibit space, and the public square and gardens. Again, if you haven't been to Hardson Yards lately, it's totally worth a visit. This is great news that it's opening up soon. Let's bring the good news local. I got great news that Green Farm School in Westport is taking to heart the old Earth Day motto, Think Globally and Act Locally. In August, members of Westport Green's task force started exploring the idea of food composting in the school. They brought together various green groups from a zero waste committee, and it now includes 46 fifth graders. The group is learning from Wilton, who I understand already has a robust food composting program. Since January, the students have been working hard to raise awareness about the need and process of food composting. They've done this through creating videos, slideshows, public service annou announcements. They've created sorting games for the younger students to learn, and they've even held a poster contest. Ultimately, their goal is to have no waste at all in the trash and recycling bins after lunch. This is completely a grassroots effort, and it really proves that a small, both in stature and in number, a group of people can have a huge impact. So great jobs, great job, Greens Farm School in Westport. Super proud of what you're doing. Our final Own Your Truth Good News story is a follow-up to last week's reminder to participate in Fairfield County's Community Foundation Giving Day that happened on Friday, February 28th. I don't know if you remember, but last week I mentioned in 2018, the one day of giving raised $1.4 in donations. This year, the foundation raised more than $1.7 million from 11,742 donors to help support 415 organizations. That's an amazing amazing increase for, for, for our important nonprofits throughout the county. Great things happen when a community comes together, and I'm so proud to be part of such a giving community. Way to go. Okay, a big shout out to the Own Your Truth followers and listeners. Um, you guys provided this week's news, and it's so much more fun when the news comes from you. So I'm going to do a special direct shout out to Phaedra and Gabby, who sent me a couple of stories. Please, please. Um, there's lots of good things being done that go unnoticed. If you have news about a local individual, organization, or business making a difference in the community, let me know. Visit the Own Your Truth Facebook page and listen each Sunday to hear your news announced on the show. All right, we are going to get to finding your ideal career. And so we'll do that in just one minute. I'm excited to share with you some tips that will make a whole lot of difference in how you search for your next job. Hi, and welcome back to Own Your Truth with Laura T. Tonight, we're talking about the difference between finding a job and landing your ideal career. I will tell you in one word, the big difference is mindset. It sounds simple, and yet it's the hardest thing to overcome. Regardless of your age, your work experience, your salary, it tends to be that most people have a limiting belief that they hold on as true that prevents them from landing their ideal career. So let me start with the story. I was invited by career services at my alma mater, Stonehill College, um, to speak with juniors and seniors. I go there about two times a year um, to talk about this exact topic, about mindset and landing your ideal career. Each visit, I'd start the session by asking the students how many thought it was difficult to find a job. Typically, I scan the room and about two-thirds of them would raise their hand. So I'd follow up by asking them to share some of the reasons they thought it was hard. And I would hear things like, you know, there's a lot of competition in the field that I study. Um, I would hear, I can't find a job related to my major or the jobs I'm interested, they don't, they don't pay enough. So, you know, I acknowledge all of their reasons because after all, they're valid. 
And yet, they don't help you find a job. They actually prevent you from being resourceful. So, to make my point, I would take it a little bit further. So, I said to the students, I understand there's lots of reasons you can't find a job. And the good news is... If you don't have your own reason, you can just Google reasons you can't find a job. And here's what you'll discover. There are actually 1.9 billion search results. So you don't even need your own reason. You can borrow someone else's. Even crazier, if you Google reasons you can find a job, the top search results are still reasons you can't find a job. So why do I share that? Because it's so easy to focus on the stuff that makes it hard. It really takes effort to shift that mindset. So my job is to help shift the mindset. The next thing I do is I share that 67% of the current U.S. working population is disengaged or actively disengaged in their job. I think I mentioned that statistic last week as well because it's so important to understand in the most simplistic terms that there is a, a lot of people, almost 7 out of 10 people, going to work, either doing the bare minimum required and going home or not even doing the bare minimum. They're, like, they're simply showing up and then going home. The good news about this statistic for people searching for their ideal career is the reality there's not a whole lot of competition out there. If you're eager to start a new career, there's opportunity because there's a whole bunch of unhappy people. That's the other part I want to address. There's a whole lot of people grudgingly going to work that they don't enjoy. So... If you fit either of those descriptions, it's important you listen to this whole show. I promise I'm going to share with you tips that help you find your ideal career. I'll teach you ways to kind of work on your mindset, show you how to get clear on what you want, and how to think differently about the process. So, again, stay with me the entire time because there's some good material here. All right, let's dive in. Let's go back to this idea of the difference between finding a job and landing your ideal career. Well, here's the thing. A job pays your bills and tends not to be very fulfilling. A career lights your fire and has you earning and learning more over time. You get to decide which way you want to go and how you want to approach the career search process often determines where you end up. So this is the important piece. I'll repeat it again. How you approach the career search process often determines where you end up. Okay, so own your truth coaching tip number one in landing your ideal career is start with your mindset, not your resume. It's easy to believe once you get the resume done and you put it out to those the, like job board abyss that you're on your way. Well, considering most recruiters spend like six seconds looking at your resume, that really it's just the beginning. And if your mindset isn't in the right place now, the whole process will feel exhausting. So vital that you get that mindset in place. You know, you heard the statistic earlier that there are a lot of unhappy people at work. If you're one of them, keep in mind changing jobs is simply a change in geography. If you don't clean up your mindset where you are, you'll take that with you. These are all important things we don't notice that we're doing until someone points them out. So again, if you're unhappy where you're working now and you change your job, that's just geography. You've really got to work on your mindset. Okay, so what can you do to get your mindset in check from the start? First, it's important to determine your commitment level to finding your ideal career. So, on a scale of 1 to 10, how committed are you? Be really honest. So, 1 is totally not committed. I'd stay where I am forever, even though I'm kind of miserable. 10 being, I'm totally committed. I would do whatever it takes to land my ideal career, right? So... If when you're asked on a scale of 1 to 10, how committed are you? If you're 1 through 3, just stop now. You're not committed enough to finding your ideal career. You may talk about it, but you aren't ready to take action, so stop trying to convince yourself that you are. The question I would ask you is, if you're not ready, what would it take for you to feel like a 4 to a 7 in the commitment level? And then make progress there. You notice I didn't have you go from a one to a three to that like eight or nine, I'm totally ready. 
because it's too hard to make that big mental jump. It's too hard for, hard for you to get past those limiting beliefs. So start small and make progress faster. Okay, so that's if you scored yourself a one to three on the commitment level. Now, what if you looked at yourself and you said, you know what, I'm kind of a four to a seven on the commitment level. That typically means that you're kind of dabbling in the job search. You feel like you should find a new job or, you know, you're a little bit unhappy. You throw a few things out there and then they don't work. So you get frustrated and in your mind, you feel like you've tried everything. Well, this is where a lot of people fall. So don't judge yourself. Often you get stuck here because, again, there are subconscious beliefs you have about making the move. Don't ignore those. Start to confront them. Ask yourself the same question here that you would if you were one through three, but you're going to up the level. So what would it take to be an eight, nine, or ten? And then start to make progress from there. Again, don't try to force yourself into making an uncomfortable move. If you score yourself on a commitment level from eight, nine, or ten, you're totally ready. You're past any old thoughts about finding a job. You're totally prepared to do what it takes to land your ideal career. So what do you do at this point? Well, you want to make sure you're crystal clear about what you want so the career search process doesn't burn you out. And that's going to be our next step. We're going to talk about what does it take to get clear on what you want. Again, I'll just backtrack for a minute. Remember, understand your commitment level before you start to look at getting clear on what you want. Because if you're not ready, that clarity could change as you prepare to get ready to make the move. Okay, so most people consider their skills for job search based on what they can do instead of what they really want to be doing. So of course it's important to have the skills necessary to do the job, but that shouldn't be where you start. So what I'm going to suggest you do is consider all of the characteristics of your ideal career. I mean, list them all. You want to list salary, you want to list location, type of manager, the, the characteristic of your colleagues, um, the hours that you work, the length of your commute, the size of the company, your company culture, even the size of the team that you're on, the type of the work your team is focused on. Include your ideal incentives. If money matters, consider bonuses. If growing and learning matters, consider the type of training that you want. You want to include as much as possible here. It's so important that you have an idea of your ideal before you start to go out and search. Otherwise, you can be easily swayed to things that could work but aren't perfect. All right, so step number one is consider all of the characteristics of your ideal career. The next thing you want to do is consider that job from hell. You want to write all of the characteristics that you would hate in your next career. Sometimes, actually, for people, it's easier to start with the stuff they don't like so they can get clear on what they want. Again, in this category, you're going to include everything. The type of manager that drives you crazy. The type of culture that makes your skin want to crawl. The type of commute that would suck the soul out of you. You want to include all of them. This is really important. This could be the next three, five, ten years of your life. I know most people don't stay in jobs that long. But, I mean, think about this as a real commitment. Put the time in at the start so you have a longer, happier career going forward. All right. So once you've done that, you've done your characteristics of your ideal, you're do you've done the characteristics of your career from hell, you then want to look at how do you have to show up to attract your ideal career. It's really important that you look at your career your next step and look at how you want to be. Oftentimes people get comfortable where they are. You know, maybe you're coming in five to 10 minutes late every day. Maybe you rush through your work to get it done because you're not really enjoying it. Or maybe you don't do those blasted reports because you know no one's gonna check, right? But you're not going to attract your ideal career with today's bad habits. So. You want to look at a time in your life when you felt really successful. It doesn't even have to be work-related, but you want to think about yourself at your best and write those characteristics. Consider what would it would take for you to be excited about your work. If you have a hobby that gets you excited, describe yourself when you're doing that. 
you want to make a time that feels good. You want to pick a time that feels good and then apply it to your work. It's the only way to attract your ideal. So some characteristics could include, I am enthusiastic, I'm excited, I'm dressed professionally, I'm confident, or I'm willing to ask the tough questions. It can be anything that fits for you. So know that I push my clients to come up with 20 characteristics for each section. It sounds like a lot, but you really want to be thinking about getting specific. We tend to be too general with these things, and then we get what we asked for, not really knowing that it would, not really getting what we expect, but we get what we ask for. Okay, now that you have your list, remember you've got one for your ideal career, one for your career from hell, and one for how you need to show up to attract your ideal, you wanna pick your top five from each list. These become your non-negotiables. This gives you a filter to accept the interviews that really fit with your ultimate next career. I'll give you an example. Um, a few years ago, I worked with a top client, and his characteristics were salary increase of 100000 or more than he was currently making, a C-level position, sign-on, retention and bonuses, stock options, and a company that was double in revenue. You know what? Putting those out there, he got four out of the five. So he was really happy. The only reason why he didn't get the fifth one is because it wasn't a public company. And so it really does make a difference. What I'm going to do is I have a worksheet to help you work through this process. I'm going to post it on the Own Your Truth with Laura T. Facebook page for you to reference. And like I said, it really works if you work it. So go down, go online and download it and um, please apply it. It's great stuff. All right. So let's review. Um, own your truth coaching tip number one for finding your ideal career is to start with your mindset, not your resume. Own your truth coaching tip number two is a full time finding a job can be like a full time process. So be kind to yourself. Listen, the average person spends 11 hours a week searching for a job. You know, the big question is, is that really enough time? So know that there's a sense the search should be fast and easy, but in, 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 listen, I want to say, sometimes that perfect opportunity falls on your lap and it's great, that's awesome, but for most people, landing your ideal career takes time. So don't get discouraged if that's what you discover. Remember, we just worked on mindset, so you have to start and do what it takes to get what you want. It's important to plan for the time, both financially and emotionally. Also remember that the career search can be really stressful for people who are working and searching. There's no right way to find your ideal, ideal career. And so while you're working a job, you have to know that you can't do both at 100%. So, you know, it's sad for me to see that the people who are working a job find it so difficult to land their ideal career because they don't give it the time that it serves. Don't fall into that trap. Plan the time to make the shift, again, both financially and emotionally. Since finding that next step in your career can feel overwhelming and it takes extra energy, it's important to ask yourself during this process, what does it take for me not to be overwhelmed right now? And, and I literally mean in the moment because it, it starts to bubble up and you get anxious and nervous. What does it take for me not to feel overwhelmed right now? Another way to go at this is to consider if you're feeling overwhelmed, what's the next step above that, right? Don't try to go from overwhelmed to, oh, I'm happy, good lucky, right? You want to, what's that next step for you? Another question, what must I do to create balance for me during this time of exploration? Finding a new career can feel really uncertain, and so consciously look for places where you can find balance. It could be in a hobby. It could be in family time. Just make sure that you're creating that space for yourself. And then finally, a question to help you be kind to yourself during this process is, what must I do for me to refuel daily? You know, it's unnatural for most people to go on multiple interviews, to be talking to all sorts of different people, to be sending out their resume to hundreds of places. So really focus on what you must do for you to refuel. And consider redefining your workday. Maybe give yourself extra time to refuel. Really, really important.
So own your truth coaching tip number two in landing your ideal career is be kind to yourself during the process. All right, on to the final own your truth coaching tip number three in landing your ideal career is really focus on finding the match and not about getting hired. I get to this point with clients and it's my favorite part of the process, like the interview, right? And yet it's so common when we're preparing for an interview, you want to say all of the right things. And I'm going to beg you, please, please don't do that. Remember, we talked about 67% of the working population being disengaged. You don't want to be one of those peoples. So really, one of those peoples, one of those people, really be you. You aren't proving yourself to anyone. You are deciding if your next step, this next organization, this next business is a good fit for you to share your time and expertise. So... I mentioned this was my favorite part of the process because I love asking questions. I suggest you go into every interview with at least 20 questions. You don't have to ask them all and you can change it up to get specific about the company or organization where you're interviewing. But I will share a few of my go-to questions. These are my favorite. Okay, I am gonna suggest you write these down because these are my favorite. All right, what is one word you'd use to characterize each person on the team? So I ask this because I really want to understand the interviewer's overall attitude about the people and the culture that they're working in. And you can get a sense, you know, listen to what they say about each individual, but don't take it to heart until you meet that person, right? But you're really looking for patterns in your interviewer's description about the overall attitude about the people he or she works with. Another question I always ask is, If you could change one thing about the company or organization, what would it be? I love this question because it's a soft way of asking, what's wrong with this company? And I'll tell you, just wording it that way sparks people to open up. And it gives you a sense as to some of the challenges. Maybe this is something that you could talk to as um, a solution that hiring you could answer, right? Another question is, What are the three characteristics you would use to describe the CEO? You want to ask this question to everyone you meet with. Get a sense of the leadership. Remember, again, hold judgment until you meet him or her, but you're really looking for patterns in the responses. You can get an idea of how the company is run based on what people say about the leadership. Another question is, where do you see the greatest gap in where you are now as a company and where you want to be? This gives you a sense of how they see themselves as an organization, as a company. Having multiple people identify the gap gives you a chance to see if you're in alignment with the company where it is now and maybe where it needs to go. If the answer seems to be the same, it also gives you a question to dive deeper and go in again and asking leadership. Another question, what are your ideal characteristics of someone coming into this position? You really want to know what your manager is looking for in an employee. Often the job description describes skill, but doesn't get to the type of person that fits best into the culture. And again, you're not looking to make it right. You really want it to be a match. Finally, the last go-to question I'll give you is, how would you describe the team dynamic in the office? This question has you looking for insight, again, into the culture of the company. You want to ask questions that give you a sense of what it's going to be like to work there before you get in. All right, those are my go-to questions. Let's review. Own your truths, coaching tip number one, in landing your ideal career, remember, start with your mindset and focus on filling yourself up first. Coaching tip number two in landing your ideal career is finding a new career is a full-time job, so be kind to yourself during the process. And coaching tip number three in landing your ideal career is find the right career match. Get Get curious and ask lots of questions. All right, it is almost time for my favorite part of the show, which again, remember, is answering your questions. So you can call in 
WICC. Again, 203-333-WICC. We will start answering questions in just a couple of minutes. But before we get to those, I need to share this week's Own Your Truth musical artist. A huge thank you to my friend Richard in California for sharing this New England gem. The Ultrasonic Rock Orchestra is a 15-person band that performs a unique and unconventional kind of orchestra that brings to life the music of Queen, David Bowie, The Beatles, The Who, and Led Zeppelin. The song you're about to hear, Child Thy Name is Rock, is a URO original from their upcoming rock opera, Come Together. The story is a celebration of the life as a journeyman musician and what happens when they discover tomorrow there'll be no more power, but they have, t- they have time for one last show. Without further ado, enjoy Child Thy Name is Rock. <laughs> Give it up for the Ultrasonic Rock Orchestra. If you're interested in hearing more of URO's terrific sound, they'll be celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Beatles' Abbey Road on March 30th in the Fox Theater at Foxwoods. They're at Foxwoods often, so you want to make sure you go to their webpage and check out their dates and availability. I also want to mention that the music you heard tonight will be featured in their rock opera, Come Together, that will take place at the Regent Theater in Arlington, Mass. on November 8th and 9th. I will post a link to their website on the Own Your Truth with Laura T. Facebook Facebook page after the show. Again, check them out. They're absolutely awesome. If you love Queen, David Bowie, The Beatles, Who, and Led Zeppelin, you definitely want to hear them live. Awesome. Okay, I'm thrilled at the recommendation shared this week. I did a call out on Facebook and as usual, everyone came together with great suggestions. Please know I'm still in the process of reaching out to people. Um, If you were recommended as someone to share your music, I will be reaching out to you over the next couple of weeks. Um, It's absolutely awesome. If you have original music that you'd like featured on the show, please message me on the Own Your Truth Facebook page and I I would love to consider uh, sharing your beautiful sound. All right, now let's get on to our questions. Own Your Truths Q&A, again, my favorite part of the hour. Listen, we're still having some phone challenges. So if you call in, please, please remember to let it ring. We will get to you. If I'm in the middle of answering a question, we just have to wait till um, I'm finished. So if you have a question and you'd like it answered, please call in 203-333-WICC. If you're anything like me, you need that spelled out 
two two. This is another place that's been so awesome getting questions online and from the Facebook page. Thank you so much. I will do my best to get to all of them. If you don't hear them live here, I am working at getting them answered on the Facebook page so that everyone gets all of their questions answered. All right. The first question tonight actually comes from someone who prefers to stay anonymous. Um, they're in Fairfield. And the question is, how can a candidate explain during a job interview that he was fired with cause and still get hired. So we wanted to dig a little bit further and found out um, there was uh, a inappropriate action um, at a previous job, at least allegedly. And so, you know, it's so important with these types of situations when you're going into your next career to be honest. How you bring it up gets to be up to you, but you want to bring it up in the beginning of the process. You want to talk about the situation and you don't have to give details. You just want them to know so that if you are hired or during the um, referral process when they're calling your references, that they're not getting sidelined by something that, you know, they've heard. So uh, the first step is to make sure that you're honest. The next thing I'd recommend is Put it in a light of growth and learning. We all make mistakes and your, you know, your future isn't dependent on today unless you make it. And so it really is important that you look at taking a fresh step, own your mistake, and then talk about what you've learned from the situation. So I hope that helps. Again, during any interview process, the most important thing to do is to be honest and um, talk about how you've grown and learned from the situation. I think we might have a caller. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Hi. Um, my name is Sarah, and I live in Fairfield. I'm a sophomore in high school, and I was just wondering... Um, I always get asked, what do you want to do when you grow up, and all this kind of stuff. And I just wanted to know, what's the best step for a high school student to um, find interest in a new career and, you know, take the first steps to possibly college and things they might be interested in? Well, Sarah, thank you so much for calling in. What a brilliant question. Um, so Sarah was asking, you know, how do you decide what you want to do for a career? That's such an important decision. Sarah, what types of things are you interested in? What types of things do you like to do now? Well, um, I think writing is definitely a thing that I enjoy. Um, and sports might be in the future, too. Um, but I just feel like there's a lot of pressure within the schools, you know, all my friends are always talking about how they need to figure out what they want to do for college. So there are a few things that I'm definitely interested in, um, but it's just about taking those and kind of where do I go with them. So writing and other things like that. Awesome. Well, it's so great that you're thinking about these things. And what I'm going to suggest first is to um, just ignore the pressure, right? Just do what's best for you. And so... Here's the reality, is that the majority of people, and I'll get the statistic, I'll put it on the Facebook page, but the majority of people do not go into a career related to their major in college. And so what I always suggest is to study things that interest you. You know, I had mentioned, I don't know if you were listening to the whole show, that we have a lot of people who are not really happy at their work, and we want our young people to really study things that they're interested in because it gives them the opportunity to stay resourceful in finding a career that makes them happy. Definitely, yeah. Does that help? Yes, thank you so much. You're welcome. And, you know, again, with all that pressure, you, you guys have enough pressure with all of your studies and really look at um, learning, learning things that interest you. And, you know, if you're creative and resourceful, you can turn them into a career. I mean, I tell people all the time, I get paid to have people talk to me. I mean, that's pretty awesome, right? Definitely. And so if I can do that, I really think that there's lots of opportunity out there for people. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for calling in today, Sarah. Thank you. Have a great night. Bye. That was so awesome. Thanks again for calling in, Sarah, and um, for listening to the show, a high schooler. Totally cool.
Okay, so let's get on to our next question. Um, I have a question from Wayne out of Bridgeport. I'm looking for a new job, and my last two bosses have been really challenging, but I didn't know it until after I was hired. How do I get that from an interview? Oh, what a smart question. And, you know, that's exactly the reason why I went through some of those go-to questions for you. Um, if you listen to the, t the coaching tips part of the show, um, really important to come up with questions that get to the heart of what the culture is like. And so um, I'll post those questions on the Facebook page as well so that you have them to reference. But, you know, the key is we, when we go into an interview, Interview, we again want to be there and have the right answers when the best way to go at that interview process is to get really curious and ask lots and lots of questions. I tell people, and a good friend of mine shared this with me, um, the person who talks the most dominates the conversation. The person who asks the most questions controls the conversation. And you really want to go in asking a lot of questions so that you get a better understanding of what the organization is like. It can be so easy to get nervous in that interview in those moments where you're interviewing and really come with your questions written so that you have a go-to and you can get out of the interview what you need to decide if it's a good match. So, Wayne, I hope that helped um, looking at the, the challenges. It looks like we have another caller. Hello, caller, you're on the air. Yes, this is Anthony from Bridgeport. Hi, Anthony. What's your question tonight? So I've been in the workforce for about 20, 25 years and, you know, worked for three or four different companies over that time frame. And one of the things I'm wondering is every time you move and you take a new job, you can't really be sure what you're getting into. Um, you know, every company is different than the one before that. And you may think you know what you're getting into, but what types of things can you do as you're interviewing to try to get the best feel possible for the company that you might be joining? Great question, Anthony. And, you know, that's sort of the theme tonight, right, is how can you be comfortable because it can be so nerve-wracking. Are you currently in an interview process? Not right now, but, um, you know, it could be soon. Okay, okay. So, you know, again, I, I'm, I'm, I feel like sort of I'm uh, repeating the same thing, but it's, it's making sure you come up with lots and lots of questions. For instance, what's most important for you in your next career? I think it's going to be the culture of the company. Uh, you know, I've, having worked for a number of years at different places, that, you know, it's not always about the money. I think again to that point in the career where it's about, you know, really building a legacy and, and feeling good about what you do every day. Awesome. And, and so with that in mind, you want to be coming up with questions that really get to the heart of the culture. You know, I had mentioned some questions about um, having, you know, the people who are interview interviewing you describe um, the CEO, um, asking them how they would describe the culture, um, asking them, you know, if, if they had one thing they could change about the organization, what would it be? These are the types of questions that are soft enough that get people to, you know, speak truthfully, but can really help you get to the heart of what's, ha what's happening um, in the organization. That, that's great advice. Do you think it's, you know, before you join a company, who are the best people for you to talk to if you know people at the, at the place that you might be looking to join? Is there a way that you can do that and not, you know, kind of blow your cover? Well, so that's so funny, blow your cover. Well, so here's the thing. Who, d what's important about not blowing your cover? I guess that's true. It's better to know than not know. Absolutely, because when you go into the process, knowing that you're a part of the decision, they're not choosing you. It's a decision you both make that this is a really great match for the organization. So when you go in there, I I would be asking for as many people in the organization that you can talk to, and then when you're talking to those people, asking them for people that you can talk to. You wanna go three and four deep, it may even be worthwhile to ask for people who have left the company that you may be able to talk to. Um, this is gonna give you a sense as to what what is the culture? How do people feel about the organization? And it's vital that you ask. You know, oftentimes we try to guess, and if we're guessing, there's a really good chance we could be wrong. So come out and ask in a way that gathers the information that you're looking for. Does that help, Anthony? 
That's great. Thank you so much, Laura, and, and great luck with the show here. It sounds great so far. Thanks so much, Anthony. Have a great night. Have a good night. Bye. You're listening to Own Your Truth with Laura T, and we're answering your questions about hiring. Don't forget, you still have time to call in. So if you have questions you want answered live, the number is 203-333-WICC. We're back, and you're listening to Own Your Truth with Laura T. I'm answering your questions about finding your ideal career. And so let's dive right back in. We have time for a couple of more. Uh, remember, if you want to call, the number is 203-333-WICC. Um, from Facebook, Jennifer from Monroe says, I'm interviewing for a management position at my company. I'm unofficially serving in the role now and maintaining my current role's responsibilities. It's been hard on me and my staff. I've been told I'm at, I'm at the top contender, but I know they're still bringing in candidates and the process is taking forever. I want to give them the time they need, but I feel like I'm in limbo. What can I do? Wow, wow, this is Jennifer. This is a tough one. So, you know, the, the first thing you want to do is really look at this management position and make sure it's what you really want. It can be easy to um, get pulled along in the, the movement up and, you know, from role to role. And it, it can be a great opportunity, but if you're not ready or the role isn't something that you want, you really want to know that in advance. So it sounds like if you're unofficially serving in the role now, um, it, it may be something that you're interested in. The idea of doing that role and your current role's responsibilities. I mean, I, I tell people when everything's a priority, nothing's a priority. And when you're doing two jobs, inevitably stuff is going to fall through the cracks. So it's really important that you get clarity about when the transition will take place. So understanding you want to be a team player, um, it's vital that you go and ask the question. You go to the the higher ups and you ask what it's going to take for them to make the decision. What is the timeline they're thinking about now? What happens for your team during this transition? Because again, you've taken on a role. Well, you've taken on two roles. Um, you know, have you asked specifically what happens for my team while I'm serving in both roles? You want to make the process easy for yourself. You don't want to be get be burnt out in the position before you even get there. And so, again, it's looking at asking the questions to get the answers that help you serve the organization better. Really asking them to commit to you as a quality employee who's ready to take on this new position about a timeline. Again, asking about what it takes to have a sufficient support for your current team. You really want to make sure that you're asking those questions so that you can put a plan in place for yourself for the ultimate transition. Jennifer, I, I hope that helped you. Um, again, looking at, you know, asking the right questions. All right, I'm going to try to fit in one more question here. Greg from Shelton asks, I'm in a quality company and I get paid well, but the culture is challenging. Um, we're in the middle of three big projects and I don't want to leave the company in the lurch. What can I do? You know, Greg, it's so great. You're uh, obviously a loyal employee. It's just never really a good time to leave. And so, you know, the thing that I would suggest is ask Asking yourself, what does it take for me to be comfortable, confident, leaving my position? Maybe that's grooming the people below you to take over some, if not uh, all of the individual roles that you play. Um, it's maybe it's, you know, going in, and speaking with your leadership and telling them that you're considering a change. I know people dread that. They're like, no, I can't do that. Well, so when, when we're looking for that next step, opening up the conversation is always the best thing to do. So I would look at what does it take for you? to feel confident and comfortable getting ready to leave? And then what are the steps that you want to have in place to get the people to underneath you to support the roles that you currently serve? Okay, I hope today's session on finding your ideal career has helped you. Thank you for joining me. Next Sunday, in honor of Daylight Savings Time, we'll be talking about time management. Do you feel like there isn't enough time in the day to get everything done? 
Well, you're not alone. We'll get to the truth about time. I'll offer you tips to get more hours in your day while increasing your energy. I know it's hard to believe, but it's possible. So tune in next Sunday from 8 to 9 p.m. This is Laura T. on Own Your Truth. I'll hear you then. Good night.